Dobry wieczór wszystkim, how are you all doing? I'm Mystical and today I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. We've got quite a few interesting topics to talk about today. As usual, we're going to begin with some meta news, but you've got chapters down below to let you skip to any part of the video that you would be most interested in. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. First things first, we've got a pretty exciting update for those that use the quest for productivity. Now, we know that the quest is preparing for a pretty big UI update, and I think a big part of that is going to be able to use the browser like you would on any other system. A lot of people use extensions inside their browsers, and according to Luna on X, we've got MetaQuest Browser is rolling out beta support for extensions, starting with LastPass for managing passwords. We finally are getting extension support in our browsers. I myself also use extensions inside my browser, whether it's a password manager, whether it's an ad block, full screenshot, things like that. I use these a lot. The MetaQuest browser is getting an experimental feature with update V32.1, which is being rolled out to a subset of users. The release notes state the following. Browser extensions. Initial rollout of support for selected browser extensions. This is a beta release, currently with LastPass available for installation. So in case you use that, you can be looking forward for that to show up as one of the first extensions inside the Quest browser. Now onto something that a lot more people are probably going to be excited about. SSW. It's a feature that makes playing wireless PC VR games on our Quest quite a bit better for a lot of users, and it's gotten even better. From the developer of Virtual Desktop on Twitter, in the latest version of Virtual Desktop, the synchronous space warp feature received some nice improvements. And the difference here is fairly large. You can see the difference going above me right now, and that is a very big stability improvement. SSW is not perfect for everyone, and uh, some people actually just straight up refuse to use it. But I myself have actually been using it quite a bit, and I love seeing improvements coming to this feature. This seems like a pretty big one. You can see it. You can straight away see the improvement here. And going back to exactly what I said, Carlos here says, I always disable SSW and even prefer to play at 42 FPS, then 72 FPS with SSW, since as soon as I activate it, any moving image gets doubled. Don't you have a similar feeling? I never understood why people use it. And yet, some people do use it. I guess it's a preference thing. The developer of Virtual Desktop responded with, it works best at 120 FPS, by the way. So performance is apparently going to stay the same here. However, these are visual improvements, and visual improvements are important to virtual reality. So that's nice to see. What's also nice to see is Flat2 VR working on licensed ports for virtual reality. In case you have a favorite flat screen game and would love to be playing it inside virtual reality, you might just be able to do so with Flat2 VR now creating licensed ports. Flat2 VR Studios is a new gaming studio developing officially licensed VR ports of flat screen games. Formed by VR publisher and marketing group Impact Reality, Flat2 VR Studios aims to bridge the gap between traditional video games and VR experiences. You guys already know how much for this I am since the previous video, where we talked about the Apple Vision Pro kind of also bridging that gap and developers on the Vision Pro getting their 2D apps and creating 3D versions of them. Well, now that's being brought up to a whole new level. Created from the Flat2 VR community, it's partnering with established VR modders like Team Beef, who have already ported tons of classics into virtual reality. And to quote, the Flat2 VR community has proven there is a tremendous appetite to experience cherished games in an entirely new way with virtual reality, said Elliot Tate, Impact Reality partner and Flat2 VR community founder. With Flat2 VR Studios, we're thrilled to work directly with the best developers to create official, high-quality VR versions of hit titles, available directly on VR storefronts such as the MetaQuest, PlayStation VR 2, and Steam. Flat2 VR Studios says its officially licensed VR game is being kept under wraps for now. However, a release is planned for late 2024 or early 2025 on major VR platforms. Honestly, very, very excited for this. Can't wait to see what they come out with. And I bet a lot of you guys are also going to be waiting. Let me know which title you would like to see in virtual reality from the flat screen space. Here is something that is a little bit less fortunate. Actually, quite a bit less fortunate. As Sony is reportedly pausing production of PSVR 2 headsets as they sell backlog. To quote from Upload VR, Takashi Mochizuki cites people familiar with its plans are saying Sony is temporarily stopping production to clear a backlog of unsold units. 
Those people also reportedly revealed Sony has produced well over 2 million PSVR 2 headsets, but market research firm IDC estimates Sony shipped less than 1.7 million headsets in 2023. It comes just three weeks before the first anniversary of the $550 product, and just two weeks before Sony shut down the developer of Blood and Truth and laid off employees in the studios behind Horizon, Call of the Mountain. On the anniversary, Sony didn't have any new first party or AAA title announcements, but it did share plans to let PSVR 2 owners access additional games on PC sometime later this year. Yeah, that was announced, and that is actually a fantastic piece of news. But it really does make you think, are Sony selling as much headsets as they would actually like to be selling? This is unfortunate news for virtual reality, because when people see information like this, when people see, oh, the PSVR 2 isn't selling well, Sony is actually stopping production, they automatically think VR is dying, and that VR isn't actually that good, no one's buying it, etc, etc. But some good did come out from this, even if that is the case, like for example the fact that Sony is now going to allow PlayStation VR 2 users to play PC CVR games, so that library will hopefully expand. It is unfortunate though that they are laying off people from these game development studios as I've actually heard really good things about these games. Maybe Sony just thought a bit too highly of their headset, when in reality it's a headset that you need to buy and the console you need to buy if you don't already have the console, and that's a bit of a price tag. Talking about older titles coming to virtual reality, Servios affirms Alien VR game is still in development. The VR veteran studio, Servios and 20th Century Games announced back in 2022 that they are, were building a new game for VR, PC and console based on the well-known sci-fi franchise Alien. Though we've heard very little about the project since, we have fresh confirmation that the game is still in the works. Update from March 19. It's been more than a year and a half since developer Servios announced development of an Alien game, but since then the studio has been very quiet. We still haven't seen any gameplay footage, let alone screenshots. In this volatile time in the gaming industry, with studio closures and layoffs around, it's never a sure thing that a game will actually make it to market. Fortunately, we now have work Word that the game is still in active development. This week at GDC 2024, Servio CTO Alexander Silkin gave a presentation covering some of the challenges and opportunities of building a VR game with Unreal Engine 5. In the session description, the studio clearly affirms Servios is utilizing these techniques to develop an upcoming VR game based on the Alien franchise. So in case you guys do want to scare yourself a lot <laughs> in virtual reality, I was going to put something else there, but we are family friendly. You should be looking forward to still seeing that game come to VR. We're just not entirely sure when. And once again, a sequel, but this time to the classic adventure game, Mist, is coming to VR this year. Zion Woods announced that Riven 1997, the sequel of the iconic adventure game Mist 1993, is also getting VR support when its bespoke remake launches later this year. The studio today revealed it's releasing both flat screen and VR modes sometime in 2024, when the game releases. Having just updated its store page on Steam, also available on GOG, to include mention of VR headset support. There's no word on whether we can expect Cyan to build a Quest native app as well, but at least we can confirm it's getting Steam VR support. The studio has been an active developer of VR modes for a number of its games, including the Quest native version of Myst, which came out in 2020, Firmament, which came out in 2023, and its first VR supported game, Abduction, which came out in 2016. So in case you guys are a fan of Myst, you can be looking forward to its sequel coming to VR apparently sometime later this year. Let's hope it does also come to Quest, but even if it doesn't, you should be able to play it on PC VR. Here's some interesting information, as Nvidia's Omniverse Cloud brings digital twins to the Apple Vision Pro in real time. This is really cool, not just for the reasons mentioned here, the reasons mostly mentioned in this article are about cars and how you can spec out a car directly in front of yourself and check it out before you buy it and stuff like that, but I think it has much more potential than just that. Nvidia has unveiled a new software framework based on Omniverse Cloud APIs that allows developers to send their OpenUSD scenes from creation tools to Nvidia graphics delivery network, GDN. According to NVIDIA, this cloud-based approach allows real-time renderings to be streamed directly to the Apple Vision Pro without compromising the details of large, technically demanding data sets. During today's GTC keynote, NVIDIA streamed an interactive, physically accurate digital twin of a car to the Apple Vision Pro. The designer wearing the Vision Pro used a vehicle configuration app developed by CGI Studio Katana on the Omniverse platform to toggle between paint and trim options and even enter the vehicle. The workflow also introduces a hybrid rendering technique 
that combines local and remote rendering on the device. Users can render fully interactive experiences in a single application using Apple's native SwiftUI and RealityKit, while the Omniverse RTX renderer is streamed from the GDN. So once again, I think this will come in really handy for people prototyping and even in the future for people like us, just, you know, normal people trying to buy something and wanting to see a real life accurate twin directly in front of us before we buy it. Maybe, you know, you don't want to go to the shop or it's something that is only available in an online store and you actually want to see the product before you buy it. Well, hopefully you'll be able to project it right there in front of you in your room, you know, turn it around, hold it, see what it looks like. And finally, the unofficial VR port of Tomb Raider hits early access. So another game that is basically a classic that a lot of people love, well, you can now play it in virtual reality. The unofficial VR port of the first Tomb Raider is now in early access and available to Patreon backers. This first early access build is available on both Quest and Pico headsets and was released this weekend. It lets you play the Tomb Raider 1996 from a first person perspective. The controls have been tweaked for smoother VR experience. You must own the original game and sideload its assets, or you can only play the demo. It doesn't matter whether you own the original game or the remastered edition, which was first released last month. However, the latter is a bit easier to install. You can find the installation page on Team Beef's Patreon page. So in case you guys are interested in checking this out, you should check out Team Beef's Patreon. Once again, Team Beef comes up because they make fantastic virtual reality ports. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you guys are in the world. And as usual, if you guys like this one, please leave a like, it costs you nothing, helps the channel out a lot. If you disliked it, I guess more works too, but let me know why down below. And if you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and I write it down below. We wanna see you posting your spicy memes. I now also have a Polish channel in case you guys are Polish and are interested in checking that out. Thank you so, so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are amazing, seriously, much love. And thank you to anyone else that super chats, donates, any thing. Seriously, thank you so much for the support. You guys are amazing. As usual, if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you in the next video. Peace. I'm getting shots of the shots being taken. That's some inception right there.